that brother that when you look down, the only thing you can see is the white of the brother's eyes. He's so far deep in the mud. But that's what the brotherhood is about. That's what 19 Keys is about. That's the reason it was brought on the planet so we can raise men and women to see their brother in the mud. We'll go down there and reach down. Come on, brother. Extend that hand. Yeah. Well, I'm a Christian too. Mm -hmm. If you practice those same beliefs and 
principal because they all tied together as one. All right. It's just somebody came on the planet and started naming different things. Yeah. I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm this, that, and another. But in my eyesight, it's how you live. It's the key. It's how you deal with adversity, with bills on cash. It's how we take care of our family, how we manage our own home and our family, black men. If you're a black man, you got to get back into the house. But you got to come back home with We have today. Look at the black nation in America. We all over the place. We don't have a solution to none of our problems. Mm. If we study keeping hope alive, maybe we can go to the poll and solve our problems. Mm. No, a solution for the black man and woman in America, you got to go to your families. You got to teach them how to be upright, righteous, honest men and women. On top of that, you got to let them know, son or your daughter, when you come out of the house, this reality that you're facing is not the reality. It's a false reality. It's not the reality that we go to school, come out, be a good job, we go all uh, good, pump your door together. It don't work like that. You have to put the knowledge of self into your family. You got to tell them who they are. You got to tell them who they open enemy is. And if you don't do that, then you're going to continue to lose in 2022. Mm -hmm. You'll be doing the same thing, looking at the same video, watching Instagram, mm -hmm. so called Facebook, and they call them meta now. Yeah. You'll be crying and hopping around, going to trial. You got preachers out front. You got the brother wearing dresses. You got to put the sisters out of business. I had a hell of a job doing that. Not the men on the planet. Not the men. Masculine men. Black man on the planet. That's who I'm talking to today in this room. Right. If you're in that other category, so what's your shit to be? Well, I ain't going really to talk to you because I don't expect you to do anything to put them dresses on. Put them down here when you go. Get you a couple of shots. You can boost your chest up a little bit. I ain't talking to you, brother. Oh. I'm talking to that Asian black man, the maker, the owner, the creator of the planet Earth. The guy that is here. The guy that is here. The guy But uh, the real 19 keys don't pop on the spot, but then the food of this love, we all ready. Yeah. And it's to come up, we ready. Like the sand grow, we ready like Fred. <laughs> so that's the Black man got to get back to his family. I'm, I'm yeah, that's true. Even if you don't get along with the you have to find a way to make that home a family. It ain't about you or I. It's about those children that's growing up in the home. No, it's on the black man in America now. We on the bottom, brother. You that brother that when you look down, one of the things you can see is the white on the brother's eyes, he's so far deep in the mud. But that's what the brotherhood is about. That's what 19 Kings is about. That's the reason he was brought on the planet so we can raise men and women to see their brother in the mud. We'll go down there and reach down. Come on, brother. Extend that hand. Yeah. <laughs> Say, come on, brother. Come on with me. Sit down. Just going to talk to that brother and that sister. Give them love. Give them that knowledge and tell them who they are. We don't know who we are. Most of the brothers and sisters, they don't know how to prove who we are. I say the black man, God, they say, man, that I'm black man gonna be the guy and he on the bottom. I just gave you the key of 1555. 
But they brought the black man in and took him from his family, his mother and father. They took those children and put them in those camps and reconditioned their minds. So what we have to do today, we got to recondition our minds, put them free. somewhere. 
It was sketched out as an idea. It was talked about in a conversation. Right? It was impressioned into the mind and then it was produced in reality and now we enjoy these things. But the question I have for everybody today is, what vision will you produce? See, as we're going to talk about NFTs and blockchain and crypto and a multitude of different things today, I always want people to think about their power in the situation. Because oftentimes we always ask people how to use things instead of how we're going to use them. Which means you get to set the standard instead of be the follower. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing about NFTs and blockchain is that number one is early. Number two is you can use it however you want to. There's no set standard. But when someone is early, they get first mover advantage. And everyone starts to follow their scheme and their standard. And that's because most of the time we are programmed to just follow. We are organisms of reaction. We see things in our environment and it programs us to modify our behavior for reward or punishment. And this gets down to the thesis of how cryptocurrency, NFTs, and blockchain become successful. Now before we get started, because I want the energy right. Does anybody know what a shaman is? A healer. A healer. Right. Who wants to explain it? Quick sentence. This is the right thing. So the good sister, thank you for that. She said a shaman is a native or ancestral person. You understand me? Essentially that delivers medicine and usually native to that land. Right? Now, me and my brother, we recorded something. And uh, my brother had a, a saying that I heard in one of his songs. He said, every good person is a shaman. Mm -hmm. Right? Every time you see somebody teach you something, give you a key, put together a conference like this, that's a shamanistic vibe right there. They help right. you enter into another realm. All right. You understand me? So each one of you have the power and the ability to be a shaman as well. But every time I see a person do good, it's like an aura around them. I see a beautiful human being guide the next person into the light. So, would y'all like for me to play this song that my brother did? Yeah. Best uh, year. Woo! Well, I need y'all to get into your spiritual vibes. You understand me? Imagine if we can smell sage in the air everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if we can burn it though. <laughs> I don't know if it's fire code. <laughs> well, listen, what I will do. We're going to play this song, and I want people to just get into a presence, because everything that we do, especially when we talk about this technology, we have to make sure that we always command in our own spirit. You understand me? Because there's spiritual and technology as well. And that's where we operate in that realm, because when we talk about the metaverse, it's metaphysical. Right? So without further ado, DJ, drop it for me. Oh, I don't feel y'all spiritual. <laughs> I need you to get into your zen for a second. I want you to absorb. Don't look at me. I want you to go in and just feel what the song is saying. What place is it visualizing? Where is it taking you to? Oh, yeah. Take three days, deep breath. Yeah, take a deep breath. Sing to yourself. See, the beautiful thing when, when original people do things, we ain't never got to do it in a manner with how all conferences are built out and it's square and it's corny and it's cubicle. No, we get to add the spiritual, the lyrical, the powerful. You understand me? We get to do it with creativity and, and masterful imagination. And we get to deliver these dope ass songs that I'm about to drop. So I hope y'all enjoy this. I know this is giving what it's supposed to give. But I can only give what I'm supposed to give. And I can only give when I'm here. And I'm not always there. I'm keeping it real. If I tell you my secrets, keep your lips up. I'm not here to hell. Not here to live. Not here to fix you. Not here to change you. I ain't judge you, God will arrange you I'm in the pain, sprinkle my match I'm in the change, wave your blood like a land Yeah, yeah, walk on heaven, feed me When a lie ain't me, I'm gon' give the pieces This is my chair, this is the way I pray This is the way I think, this is the way I repent Wave my DNA, activate the kid And I pray my heart is like to feel my sin Every good person is a shaman. Every good 
Blockchain is the only place we can get reparations now. Right now. Right, right ain't gonna be Kamala. Ain't gonna be Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden. You understand me? You're not gonna be able to vote your way into it. But guess what? You can work your way into it. See, reparations is the repairing of the mind. Mm. You understand me? It's repairing that which was broken. So to ask somebody else to repair you already, <laughs> right. you're already a lost cause. You understand me? Because nobody can do for you what you should be doing for yourself because they will always be your master. Mm. So blockchain allows us the opportunity to give ourselves reparations today. You understand me? I was talking with a brother yesterday. He was a former president of Revolt, and uh, he had this coin that he got coming out, and he was explaining how he is only in conversations with billionaires who are only talking billions. And he said that we talk about this wealth gap, you understand me, as if we really understand it. Not at all. He said, when you see numbers on the paper, you see, I see something like a high number, 53. He said, well, 53 million? No, they said 53 billion. They pay him with trillions of dollars in their funds. You understand me? So even whatever technology created, they got more money than us, so they're going to invest more, so they're going to reap more. We got a $10 trillion deficit in our community that we need to close in on in order for us to be able to substantiate ourselves and equalize ourselves in this world. Come on now. They talk about the $17,000 household income in gap between $171,000 income between black and white. Right? They talk about the 2053 problem, which we'll get to in a little bit. But the reason I say stop putting excuses in front of your opportunities is because literally, if you listen today, and if you listen throughout this conference, you will get keys that will open doors, that will open realms, that will open opportunities, that will open wealth. But the biggest issue that we have in our community is not the technology, not the available funds, right? It's the lack of action. We're not truly revolutionaries, we are reactionary. Right? We are always waiting for somebody else to do it. Then we go complain about what's about to be done, mm. producing that into reality instead of looking at the technology as an opportunity to say, I'm going to use this. I'm going to kill this. Right. Right. As soon as we hear about the metaverse, oh, man, y'all, you're going to get brothers in there, they're going to die in there. The sister told me yesterday the metaverse is the most dangerous place for a black person. I said, I grew up in Oakland and St. Louis. That can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> And if it is, then the world got a lot safer. <laughs> now, what she was speaking on more so, because a lot of times we like to polarize things instead of having a logical conversation and break things down, right? The blockchain is a system that was created by who knows, to be honest. Let's say they do have a nefarious agenda. Let's say the CIA, the NSA, whoever created this, right? But see, the thing that they cannot calculate is our mind. The original mind on the planet Earth is so powerful, no matter what they create, we can always use it for the betterment of ourselves. We can always use it as an opportunity to do for self. Right? When social media was produced, they did not calculate that a 19 Keys and a Brother Truth would be out here spreading information and knowledge on lots of people. All right. The blockchain is the bigger picture. We're going to talk about NFTs, but you have to understand what the blockchain is, right? The blockchain is this new ledger to where things are transparent, and we're going into a new transparent culture and a new world where everything will be seen. What does that mean, right? Now, on one side of it, if we want to get into the investing side, we're going to look at what are the best companies that I can get into right now. So when all of the development is done, I can reap benefits. Right? Whether we're talking about Microsoft and the HoloLens, or we're talking about Meta, formerly known as Facebook, they pulled a prince on us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, 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 the the name prince? <laughs> but the blockchain is the bigger picture because anything that you can think of can be created on the blockchain. Right? Any system, any idea, every problem that we've ever had as far as economic problems, uh, unity problems, trust issues can be solved on the blockchain, right? Because if I can create a smart contract, which we'll go into as well, you understand me? Then I don't need to trust you. The beautiful thing about this is decentralized finance, right? We talk about the banking industries. DeFi, just banking without white people controlling it. 
Give a round of applause for that. Yeah. That's all it is. I like to break it down simple. Meaning that we can now utilize these banking tools and entities to be able to sell back. You understand me? I can loan you money. We can do collateral pools inside the house. One plan that I want everybody to understand is we're going to get into some multi-signature wallets and give you a plan on how you can be a crypto expert in your family, right? You can invest the money for your family, flip it, you understand me? And then it's going to be a trusted system. So they're like, I don't trust any of your money. Now, don't even worry about it. We got a way where you ain't got to trust them with your money. You got to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And that's the beauty that we're going towards right now. That everybody just needs to trust themselves. We're going to let the technology do the rest. Right? Now, beautiful people here today, man, we are spiritual, intellectual, smart, intelligent people, right? And we need no validation from no technology. This is not our savior. This is just a tool that the saviors are using, right? And I want that to be understood deeply before we get into the execution of these things, right? Now, NFTs are digital assets backed by smart contracts, right? Smart contracts, a, a, a smart contract Put that wrong. It's just a contract without white people. <laughs> now, the reason I say this, <laughs> the reason I say this is how many brothers are in contracts where they slaves? Yep. You understand? They're slaves of a corporation that assigned them something because they know they don't understand legalese. They know that they right. cannot read the document, right? And then they make it so complex in a whole other language, right? And I always say that, you know, every level of language is a new consciousness. You understand me? Because once you have the language to interpret and express, you can now interact, right? Otherwise, you are left dumb. People are speaking in circles around you, and you have no idea of what they're talking about whatsoever. You understand me? So smart contracts are the future because I can do a contract with each one of you all. We can have it written on the blockchain, what they call Web3 developers, right? If you want to, please, everybody be quiet. If not, you can leave the room, please. When we're going to talk about Web3, Web3 is something that everybody needs to understand as well because Web3 is basically the new internet where the blockchain is being built on top of. If you can connect your business right to a smart contract and have it operating without you, wouldn't you want to do that? Yeah. Right? And you can get royalties for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Right? So if I take the song that I just made with my brother and I put it on a blockchain, right, and I've only allowed, let's say, just the amount of people that's in here today. Right, then when you sell it, I'm still going to get paid because I own the masses, because I did what they call minting it on the blockchain. Minting it is the process in which you uh, put a transaction on the blockchain, right? And that blockchain cannot be corrupted. It cannot be changed. You understand me? A person can't go back and manipulate it whatsoever. So it's a trusted system because of the way that they built it. And this gives so much more application because the banking system already operates on a ledger. The banks have a ledger of their own, but they don't have the master ledger. The master ledger is owned by the central banks. You understand me? Federal Reserve, Treasury. But they can't change that. Right? Now, what gives a dollar value in the first place? The person. What, what, what? The person. Yeah, it's an, it's an agreed upon system. Right? We agree in a society that we can utilize this in exchange. It is backed by the full faith and credit of the people. You understand me? It's backed by you. So people always ask, why are NFTs valuable? Right? Well, what is value in the first place? And that's what we need to understand. How do you create value? Mm. This is something that has not been taught in our culture, the creation of value. We know how to buy value. We know how to sell value. We know how to influence value. But the creation of the systems of value is the power, right? We got projects out there, Board Eight Yacht Club. Anybody heard of that? Yeah. Crypto Punk. Anybody heard of that? Yeah. Right? They created value. Why? Because some of the first now Crypto Punks for all those who don't know, this is one of the first projects minted on the blockchain. You understand me on the Ethereum blockchain. So the value that essentially that it has is they generated ten thousand randomly generated. Uh, uh, Crypto punks is what they call it, you understand me, which are faces with different attributes, right? Now, all of this is important to understand when you get into NFTs and why that particular project is valuable in the first place, right? Now, given that it's the first project on the blockchain, why do you think that's valuable? It's the first project on the blockchain, history. You understand me? If the world catches on this and billions of people are using it and you own
home, be the first project. That's like owning a a a a a, a, a Basquiat. Yeah. You understand me? I was gonna say a white horse, but I young black man. <laughs> <laughs> so I missed the opportunity to buy one. I was gonna buy one when it was at twenty nine thousand. And you talking about just digital uploaded pictures? But the difference is, is that you can screenshot. Uh, uh, a picture of the Remedy Conference, right? But that don't mean that you own the conference. Uh -huh. No, you can go screenshot a picture of a bank, but you don't own the bank. So people say, well, what if I just screenshot a picture and get the same? No. Digital ownership is the new flex. Yeah. You understand me? People being able to say, I actually own this digital item is the same reason that people collect sports cards. It's the same reason that people collect anything of any nature. Right? The value is given by scarcity. The value can be given by value. You understand me? It can be delivered by utility. There's many different things. Now, this particular project is based on the amount of people that's actually involved. So Jay-Z bought one. You understand me? Uh, a bunch of different random celebrities bought into it because they understood that this was basically art. You understand me? To say that, wow, I'm in a project where it's only 10,000 of them, and I know Jay-Z owned one as well, and I have one. Right? And the scarcity model is just the fact that it's only 10,000 and billions of people on the planet, so it's just supply and demand. You understand me? And it's a historical reference to say I literally own the first project, and that's going to be something that a person can put in what they call a digital wallet, which is secure, you understand me? And you own it, and you can pass it down. So I know everybody in here understand trust, but I have been introduced to trust. Raise your hand if you have. Right? So if you have a trust, you can now take these digital assets and put them in your trust. Right? And now they're getting to the point where you can even borrow against these digital assets, such as NFTs. So imagine buying a picture for $5 or $100, and you buy it to a project. And then all of a sudden, you got people becoming millionaires, right? Because all of a sudden, the price is driven up by supply and demand. People want to buy into it. Sometimes it's clubs, right? So they buy into access. Access is a big driver on why people buy things. Most of the time, people are buying into the hype. You understand me? The fear of missing out. When you got a million people trying to get into the, the same door, you understand me, that building was very valuable. It's the reason why Gucci always have a line outside, and they got all that space inside. Mm. So when you get into creative projects, which we're going to get into a little bit, and I also will break into a Q&A because I want to give value customized to how you're going to utilize this technology, right? A smart contract is a self-executing contract with the terms of the agreement between the buyer and seller being directly written into lines of code, right? If me and Brother Truth did a contract together, right, and we said we're going to take a NFT and we'll take a picture of the ticket and we're going to put it on the blockchain where there's this minting process, it goes into the blockchain, we need a transaction is now encoded on the blockchain. The blockchain is just this chain of transactions inside what they call these nodes, right? Now that it's certified on this ledger, that's basically having your masters, right? Now what I can do is we can set the smart contract to say that for every ticket sold, I get 19% or 19 keys, right? And now if we do this, I don't have to trust whether Brother True is on, gonna actually give me that because the money is gonna be sent directly to my wallet, right? and the other percentage is going to be sent directly to his. That's a smart contract, right? But then you can set the terms however you want to. There's many different things that you can get into once you go into smart contracts, and that's why that's really going to be the future. Because also, you got these contracts, and if they put on the blockchain, then they can't be put in anything that's crazy in there. Because anybody, the beauty thing about the blockchain is anybody can go look at anybody's wallet in any transaction in the world at any time that they want to. Right? So if there's a transparency model, it's going to kill the institutions that our predators are preying on our people's ignorance. You understand me? Because they're not going to be able to write contracts and get away with it because you can always just have somebody go look at it. It's transparent. You know exactly who it came from because oftentimes we hear about these contracts, but we never hear about who wrote them. We'll, we, we, we blame the victim in the contract all the time. Oh, this person was stupid. Why did why they sign that? He was slave. Well, who was the slave master? You understand me? But now, if you put together a contract and you put in some slave terms, you understand me? All of the people will know exactly who that came from, so you get exposed. Mm. So what it does is it incentivizes better behavior, right? Now, in the essence of 
um, tokenomics, we talk about um, B.F. Skinner. He was this psych Caucasian psychologist. And at the root of his teachings, he dissected the study of mind, right? And he specifically wanted to understand how to manipulate the human mind, how to control behavior, right? Why do people buy into Dogecoin? Why do people buy into Shiv Inu coin, right? Why do children start to automatically act, some children at least, <laughs> act good in school, right? Why are we incentivized by A's and stickers and treats, right? Because things that we normally would not have done are now being reinforced within us by rewards, right? By tokens, by pleasure. So if I get know that I'm going to get a good grade, then guess what? I'm going to study. But naturally, human beings are not civilized, right? Civil is coming under military jurisdiction. Civil are things that are made by man. That's civilization, right? We naturalize. We are natural. And the natural is not for us to sit down at a desk and learn something so I can get an A on a test. For what reason? Who cares? You understand me? The human experience, don't, you're not born caring about those things. So they knew that they had to figure out how to control the human mind. Now, this is important because this is the exact psychology that they utilize by making cryptocurrencies uh, 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 projects successful, right? They need to figure out exactly how are we going to get this adopted in a broader ecosystem. Why would people buy it, right? So has anybody bought some Dogecoin in here? Raise your hand. Now, <clears throat> how many people in here bought Dogecoin because they heard somebody else bought it? How many people in here bought Dogecoin because somebody else made money on it? Right? Now, some of you all may have been early, right? But for the most part, there is no logical sound reason to buy Dogecoin. Unless there is a reward and a punishment that gets set up to start controlling behavior how you're going to interact with it. The moment I see my homie that made 10000 on it, I start to think, if I buy into it, then I can make 10000 So guess what? I'm willing to take that risk. Right? So there's no logic behind the tokenomics of Dogecoin besides the fact that a lot of people believe in it, making it a new money. Right? And then we are uh, uh, reacting to all of our outside circumstances. Right? And the reason I want to say this is because the most important thing to have in this market is discipline. To go in there with an actual plan and know what the hell you're doing. Tokenomics allows you to decrease risk and increase profits because you have a reason for everything that you do. You have an auditing system of why you're buying the coin. You know which, which uh, uh, places that it's going to be listed at. You are, if you do not get into a coin if you have not read the white paper. You understand me? If you get into an NFT project, research who are the developers behind it. Research if they have a roadmap. You understand me? That will let you know that if it's going to be valuable in the future. Oftentimes we get into these things and we don't care who behind it. Right? No, that's just blindly writing people checks and saying, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And these are just random people, probably some nerds, sit down at their computer just generating stuff, and you getting happy just writing your money. No, research, investigate first, right? Now, what it says up there is more law. Now, I know y'all familiar with Moore's law. Not the M-O-O-R, you understand me? The M-O-O-R-E. Moore's law speaks upon how over the last 50 years, transistors, you understand me, are consistently increasing. Now, the reason I want y'all to understand this is because the pace at which technology is consistently growing, you understand me, is outpacing the understanding of the people. And things are going to get to a point of singularity to where they're moving so fast that you won't be able to predict the future. Right? That's the whole point. Technology is getting to a point where, you know, you talking about 100 years ago, uh, the effort that it took to have light in your house is completely different than the effort it takes to flip a switch today. Human beings have more access, right, than any other point in time in history on this planet Earth. But we take it for granted. We take it for granted that we have access to the internet, we have access to blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFTs because we are always operating from an old standard and an old model. And we believe that if we operate in an old model, then we're doing the right thing, right? If you want to be an activist, you've most likely grown up programmed with the pictures of an activist. You want to go out there and pick it. You want to go out there and raise hell, right? But how are you going to do it today? There are some activists who may not use social media at all. 
And that's fine. But is it efficient? Right? Because the whole goal is to raise awareness. And social media is where you capture attention. And attention is the most convertible asset on the planet Earth. If you have everyone's attention in the world, then you can produce anything that you want. Whether it's good or bad, it's just energy. It's just consciousness. Right. You understand me at the fundamental level. So even when I produce content, if I'm creating an NFT or cryptocurrency, I have to figure out how the hell do I get attention? How do I get people to look at this? Now the thing about attention, it don't matter if it's good or bad attention, it depends on how you're going to convert it. Because you can always break it down to a percentage. It's the reason why the Kardashian family, right, has so much money, because they're just converting attention. Or you hate them, or you like them, it don't matter. If I convert 10% of that billion, guess what? I'm rich. You understand me? So when it comes to these things, that's how the banking system makes all their money. They looking at it like sands. Uh, 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 if you look at a uh, an hourglass with sand in it, you understand me? Imagine that's the money of the world. They don't have to capture all of it. They just have to have their hand right there, get money off each transaction that you make, wow. and they become the richest on the planet. The future is now, right? If you right now go start investing into, let's say, Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now, specifically, I want to let y'all know that, you know, Bitcoin is not going to give you the greatest returns on the planet because it's already up, you understand me, at $63,000. Even if it goes up to $120,000, that's still 100% return. You understand me? What you want to look at are things where you can buy the most amount of tokens in, right? So you're going to be looking at projects that have a lower price, but also that you actually understand the technology and the utility of it, right? How many people are familiar with Solano? How many people are familiar with Polkadot, right? These are projects on the blockchain that represent blockchains, right? So people built their own blockchains to improve upon the existing ones, right? Because this is new technology. Right now, if you was to mint a project uh, on the blockchain, the NFT, it will cost you a lot. It's called gas fees. You understand me? And these are the fees that are produced from mining because you have miners on the back end that make sure that the technology is running and operating and they get paid each time that they verify a transaction. And when you have this system all around the world of people verifying it, this is what makes it sound, right? Infinite Wealth Street, I just put that up because I like the picture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said people gotta see this on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, the goal today is be a designer. You do not have to be the smartest. This is what I want y'all to really get into your mind with this, right? Be a designer. You understand me? And get into design thinking process. If you want to get into designing any one of these projects, you want to start breaking this stuff down to a science and get into a real understanding. You understand me? First, number one, in understanding anything that's going on right now, you definitely have to empathize, right? Empathy in this generation will allow you to have a masterful understanding of what people are thinking and feeling. Right? Right now, if you are, if you design your business and you design your project, right, meeting the needs that have not been communicated, a person is going to love it. It's like you're in a relationship with a person, it's like they're reading your mind. You understand me? That's what a good business does. They make you feel loved. They make you feel taken care of. Right? But empathy today is even more important because we are a society that is losing our human connection and understanding. You understand me? And when you design projects, let's say that, you know, uh, understanding how people feel because, number one, black people don't operate off uh, a, a logic when we come to buy things. We operate off emotions, right? So you want to sell to the emotion, right? Most of these crypto projects are probably going to be worth nothing in the future, right? Most of these NFT projects are probably going to be worth nothing in the future, but they know that people are poor. They want money. They empathize with that. I'll create an opportunity, then you will buy in. It's simple, but more specifically into design thinking, meaning that, you know, Mark Zuckerberg already has Facebook created, a social platform. The blockchain is already in existence. Non-fungible tokens, NFTs are already here. You do not have to create none of it. Now, your job is to figure out how do I design it? How do I know how to tell them every detail? Because you can always hire somebody to do it. You understand me? My goal now is not to try to make you the smartest person. I really want to get you to be the most creative. Right? Because if you can learn how to utilize these tools in the best manner, then you can be successful with it. Everybody is just copying the next person saying that, damn, how did he do it? 
You understand me? It's like being in school and everybody's cheating on somebody else's paper and they think they're smart. They don't even know if they got the best answers. You understand me? But this is what happens in society. No original thinking and it doors the mind to constantly copy other people. But if you get creative, then you can always have the first mover advantage, right? So number one, how many people have been to the NFT in here? Good. How many people have sold the NFT? How many people in here feel confident that they can sell the NFT this month? We got more confident than people who sold. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. So by the end of this, I want to get your confidence level to 100%. That everybody in this room raises their hand that they 100% can sell the NFT. And I'm about to change your mind in a second with the way that you think about it right now. How many people in here buy money? Buy money? Buy money? Now I understand that. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good one right there. See, when you think about going to get some money, you're not going to think about how I'm about to go buy some money. But when you think about cryptocurrency, you think about how I'm going to buy some crypto. Oh. Okay. Well, if crypto is money, you have to start thinking about how to earn cryptocurrency. Ooh. Right? Now, how many people in here sell a product? A lot of people. How many people here have sold a product? How many people here have a service? How many people in here have a business? Right? Each one of you have the ability right now to sell an NFT. The reason why is because you're thinking about this whole thing way too complex. Right? Blockchain to me and NFTs is a system for transacting. Right? Right now, if you take that same product that you sell, who got a product that they sell? Raise your hand again. Good sister, what do you sell? I sell sea moss. You take a picture of some sea moss, right? <clears throat> and then you tell your customers that I'm now accepting cryptocurrency. Whoever buys the picture of the sea moss will get their sea moss shipped to them. On the back end, they have what's called unlockables. Once that person buys it, I'm going to tell you, matter of fact, this is how you can automate the whole system, right? Currently, do you do your own shipping? Yes. So let's say you wanted to have it completely automated, right? You would mint these pictures on the blockchain. It's what they call, let's say, you minted 10,000 of them, or however much supply that you actually have, right? You would take a picture of that CMOS, right? And then you would put it on the blockchain. They have a link that you can connect to it, which is called an unlockable. If you have this link connected to your site, let's say you operate with Shopify, or let's say you operate with whatever site that you're utilizing, you can set up a free product, right? All they're gonna have to do is possibly pay for shipping or you can put that into the price of the actual NFT. So the moment they buy it, it's gonna unlock a link that's going to have them put in the information to, buy, uh, to uh, have the CMOS shipped to them. Now, of course, if you have this connected to a third party, it is then where they ship it for you, then your business will be completely automated and you earn a cryptocurrency. How many people in here feel confident that they can sell the NFT oh. by the end of this month? We're getting more. Let's go further then. Oh, oh, let's get back to that. That's fine. So, this is a picture of a crown. Right? Now, in the actual video, it's a spinning crown and it turns different colors. I have a huge project that I'm going to be dropping, right? Now, let's say that if you buy this crown, you actually get a gold crown. Let's say it weighs a kilo in weight. Now, the way I would actually do it is like this. You're going to pay for the base design. You're going to pay for the materials and everything. So I'm going to set the price at the material cost of this crown. But if you pay for it, I will actually send you a real physical gold crown, right? Now, what I just did, of course, is using other people's money. That's the best thing on the planet Earth, right? It's basically creating a, a, a system to where you don't have to create the product until the customer orders it. Hmm. You understand me? So I could also set it up a different way. Everybody who buys this one, they get sent the crown. You understand me now that you own it, but guess what? Let's say you own this NFT, and now you want to sell it to somebody else. Well, I can have it set up to where, let's say that you get 20%. You understand me? So now you actually get like a 20% rebate. You sell it to somebody else for the same price. You get 20% of your money back. You still got your crown. I'm going to get 80%. You understand me? So therefore, I can cover my cost of the production of the crown and still have profit and send it out to the customers. Now, imagine if this has happened a thousand times, mm -hmm. right? 
I don't care. It could be a hundred years in the future. If somebody's still selling that picture, I'm still getting paid. So now my products have royalties to them. Wow. You understand me? They could have just sold the picture. They could have just transacted. But I'm getting paid off of my product forever now. Right? You can do that to the sale of a house. You can put inside the contract in the sale of a house that if somebody sells this house, you get a million dollar home. Let's say you get 0.1% or 1%. And the person that's buying the home has to agree to the smart contract that they sign. It, it could be 50 years into the future, 100 years. Your estate is still getting 1% every time the house is sold. Think about that for a second. Creativity. Everybody want to think about, I'm going to sell a, a picture. No, you're selling a utility. You understand me? You now have access to very smart technology, and it depends on the way that you want to use it is how it's going to be used. I don't care what somebody else is doing with it. I'm always thinking what I want to do. This one of my students, right? Up 12K this week, all NFT money. Three ETH. That three ETH are almost worth $15,000 right now. You understand me? What did he do? He started buying projects on the blockchain. Buy them low, sell them high. One thing I want people to do, don't, if you go look at projects that's over ETH, don't even worry about it. Uh, Ethereum is essentially a blockchain that allows you to be able to build on top of it. So you can build NFTs on it. And some of you all can do your own reach to bridge the gap between your ignorance and understandings. Right? But <clears throat> if he goes find all of the projects that are about to be released, that he can tell people are spending money on, that people are spending advertising money on, you understand me, and he can catch one of those projects each time that it drops, then the secondary market, he can make money. Because the first market, let's say a person buying it at a dollar. Right now, they get to set the price of what they call the floor price. So if I sold all of you all my NFT right now, right, and everybody bought it at a dollar, now collectively, y'all can agree tomorrow to sell it at $100 each. So now y'all set the price. Right? So now, guess what? You're going to make money off the sale. Right? Depending on what percentage that I set it at, I can set it at 50%. Right? Y'all got it for a dollar, so it don't matter. Y'all get a thumb up. Right? Y'all sell it at 100 The next day, you get $50. The money just went up. So the students, I've been teaching them what I call fungonomics. Right? And fungonomics is a study and understanding of why NFT projects are adopted in a broader system. Utilizing the same system of understanding when it comes to tokenomics and why cryptocurrency projects are adopted. Right? Now, the beauty of it is, you know, he had to sell no drugs, had to murder nobody, had to rob nobody, had to work for nobody. All he had to do was utilize his creative mind, execute on the knowledge that was given, and he was able to make $12,000 sitting at his home on his computer. You understand me? So when we talk about financial literacy, we talk about financial intelligence, what I want to do is give people opportunities so that they can do for self. All I do is look at this technology as a tool that we can utilize to give ourselves reparations. That's it. Right? I'm not interested in people spending a million hours in the metaverse because I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, games. I'm, I'm not that excited about NFTs beyond what I can produce from them and the results that I'm going to get from them and what I'm going to do with the resources. So I'm going to take digital money. You understand me? And digital assets and buy physical assets, such as gold, such as land, which we get into a little later. There's something I like to call Letter to Garcia. My father introduced me to this letter. Any of you what strategy students in here? So y'all already know. Don't say nothing. So this letter to Garcia, if <clears throat> I gave you a letter, my good brother, and I said, man, take this to Garcia. What would be your next thing you would do? Oh, I'd take it to Garcia. He said he'd find out where Garcia is. What would you do, Mrs.? What would you do? Took this letter to that they could help win the war. But Garcia was on the opposite side of the battlefields. 
So it's seemingly impossible mission that he was sent out on this task. He didn't know how the hell he was going to do it. But when he got that letter and he got that information, he just executed. He didn't go back to the generals like, man, how do I do this? How am I get over there? Man, they're killing people. He, wow. No. Nah. He just said, okay. Now this soldier took the letter all the way to Garcia, and that helped him win the war. Because mm -hmm. he was able to get the certain information over there to him. Mm -hmm. Most people always think they need more to get started. Amen. That's the issue that we have today. Right. Right. You always spend in the right time, waiting on the right time. Wow. Let's do what you told. The letter to Garcia is when you take the information and you execute it. It does not take 21 days to make a habit. It's the day you start and the day you don't quit. But when you start something, you quit because you don't control self. Today, somebody wants to stop smoking weed. You couldn't do it. You give yourself an order to do you talking to your habits right now. That's your master. You understand me? So when I give people this information, I want you to be independent. I want you to execute. And I got what they call a letter to Garcia room. And in that room, we only talk about the results that we get from the letters that we take. Mm -hmm. You get the information. That letter that I just showed you, that was a letter to Garcia. He didn't say, Keith, I need to know more about this. No, I gave you enough. Fill the gap, execute. Yep. Right. You understand me? He took the letter and then he got paid. This generation is overly informed, but they under-execute. What? Oh. <laughs> in the library, 10 book two, man, with so much knowledge, thousands of books, yeah. all of that recorded history in there. Mm -hmm. Man, what do you imagine if you had access to that? Mm -hmm. It would be crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. But you got to have that phone in your hand. Act like you ain't got a Tim Book 2 right there. <laughs> all of this knowledge that you have at your fingertips, all of this access that you have on a daily basis, you're not taking that letter to Garcia. You know how many people hit me up all of the time about Googleable things? Yeah. <laughs> if it's Google, but don't ask me, ask Google. Yeah, I know, right? Go on YouTube. Really good. Then everybody go in there and teach them for free things it's that they can learn for free. <laughs> no. You go execute. I'm not your man. You understand me? Every human being has the ability to execute and do for self. And what I want people to do is to take this information and execute on it. Yeah. You understand me? By the end of this month, you should be earning cryptocurrency. By the end of this month, you should have your trust set up. By the end of this month, you should have your credit card. Right. By the end of this month, you should have your business card. Right. It's a very dangerous time that we're living in right now. Yep, yep. See, the most dangerous thing is, the digital world is dangerous. The digital world is very dangerous. Let me tell you. Let's say everybody goes into the digital world, right? Augmented reality, virtual reality, spatial reality. You're spending all your time in there. You're taking all of your physical assets and you convert them all into digital assets, right? Well, you're feeling rich. You got money, you got so much crypto. You understand, you buy an item for no reason. Now what happens if the grid goes down? Now don't get me wrong, a lot of the rich people are wealthy, they go put their money into digital assets, but they have more money to put in there. At the same time, while they put it into digital, they put it into physical. So if the grid went down, the internet went down, and it was all destroyed, your whole digital identity and wealth was lost. So that's why I tell people to take the digital money, the digital assets, and make sure you buy physical ones. Because when the grid goes down, the man with the most physical assets is the wealthiest in the world. Mm -hmm. He got the most land, the most gold, the most natural resources. Super, super. All of a sudden, the billionaire that was at the top are now at the bottom because that money that they had just disappeared. So if I can get you to put your whole entire identity digitally, all I got to do is rub the energy. And when that's gone, then you're gone. Same thing with social media. You know how many times Rizzo been kicked off? Social media? Yeah. They can't stop Rizzo. I'm going back again every time. Right? <laughs> but why? Because his physical real estate is worth more than his digital real estate. You understand me? Traveling around the world, meeting people, but also having land that you own. Let's say the bank goes down, the wallet goes down. Guess what? I still got land and gold. I still got resources. I got farming. I got equipment. I got things I have in my mind. You 
and the same people drop me off anywhere on the planet Earth and I can produce me mm. So I only want to give that as a caution for what we really build it out here. You understand me? We utilize this as a tool so that we can own physical assets. Right? Not so you can just live in the digital world. Now, mm -hmm. augmented reality is something that everybody should be implementing into their business. <laughs> right? Being able to create digital products that interact with the physical world. Everybody seen that Pokemon Go thing? You pull up your phone, you see digital things here. Right? They have ways where they can geolock in certain locations to where, let's say that, because you know, you gotta kinda experience spatial reality to kinda understand it, right? Which they make in these new glasses where you put them on and then you can see all the digital things in your space. Well, shoot, I could have a digital painting right there. But let's say it's only unlocked for the people who bought that experience, mm. right? So all of you all could be having a different experience in here. Mm, wow. You understand me? The architecture that you can see could be different than the person next to you. Right? Augmented reality is huge. It's going to be a space that you want to invest in if you into stocks. And then also looking into the cryptocurrency projects that are into augmented reality, virtual reality, and spatial reality. Spatial reality is something that most people do not understand whatsoever, but it is, what did my brother Ian Dunlap say? It's 80% more addictive than social media. Mm -hmm. Now, that's particularly dangerous. I tried it. Man, I didn't want to take them off. <laughs> Because it decreases the need to have a phone and have any physical technology around you. It's hands-free. You understand me? And you can pull it up. You can move it into space. It's spatial reality. It exists in time and space. You understand me? And when people start putting this on, it's going to transfer them into a whole different dimension and different reality. The way you're going to think about life in the world won't be the same. You will not even appreciate your own eyesight and what God has created because you're going to want that digital experience. You understand me? It's not, life is not going to feel like enough for you. Right? It already not that way. That's why people always have their heads in their phone instead of looking at nature. You understand me? We appreciate things made by man more than we do appreciate things made by God. That's the reality. The goal with this is to create projects, though. If you want to go long term in this, you want to create projects. Whether you're creating your own cryptocurrency and a token, I talked to a brother, he had a project named Vibranium yesterday, and his whole setup was basically trying to bridge that gap for that $10 trillion that we behind, right? Now, he basically wanted me to come in and the advisory team. See some things I already, you know, think that need some fixing. But with these projects, you understand me? Let's say I gave this example before at Earning Your Leisure. Let's say uh, we wanted to change uh, the crime rate in Chicago, right? Everybody knows that Chicago has the brand of crime, right? And Mark, even as of right now, they're not number one. I think St. Louis is. But let's say that you wanted to change it. Now, how do you go about doing this? Because a lot of efforts have been exhausted in the city of Chicago to try to change it. A lot of efforts. You understand me? This is what most people don't appreciate. There's a lot of people working to try to change this problem, right? Now, when you study in the psychology of tokenomics and economics, then you start to understand ways to be able to change people's behavior. You start to create different standards and different environments and reasons for why they can change it and get them to reinforce those reasons. So one idea, let's say if we was to get on the blockchain, we just wanted to utilize the blockchain for it. Well, what I can do is, for every Chicago resident, I can give them all digital wallets, right? These wallets will be directly connected to the crime rate, right? If the crime rate goes down, then money is what they call airdropped into your wallet, where a person can send you direct money. So now, guess what? I can go to the leaders, I can go to whoever, and tell them that if y'all decrease the crime rate, if you don't murder so-and-so, if you don't money down, guess what, y'all get paid, because we know that crime is directly connected to economics. It's the lack of resources. You understand me? If you can give a person opportunity and hope that they can see a future. You go to the hoods of America, most people don't see a future. They don't see a reason. Why not? You understand me? But if it's directly connected, now I'm incentivizing them. Now your new gangs are stopping the crime. Now your new gangs are saving each other. Why? Because that's how your family go eat. You kill someone, you take the food out of my daughter. You understand me? Play it. 
But if we utilize the technology in creative ways, then we can use it to solve the problems that have been haunting us all this time. And we want to create infrastructure between Africa and black people within America. You understand? But we can easily create a crypto coin to where we exchange money, ideas, and a social platform between each other. Places where their economies are not so good, where the women are not treated that good. You understand me? You can give the Don tribe opportunities. All they need is access to the internet. You understand me? Now, African countries are the ones who are adopting cryptocurrencies more than anybody. Right? And the African countries are going to have the greatest growth population spur. You understand me? They're going to have a lot of influence in the future, which is why all the billionaires are going over there spending all of the money up. You understand me? Trying to buy as much land and get into that ecosystem. The Nigerians, they own it. You understand me? They were sending us all the damn emails. You know what I'm saying? They said, I might as well just invest in crypto. The Nigerian people are, I believe they are the number one country invested into cryptocurrency. Right? So our people see opportunities in it. But our people are distracted over here. Specifically in this diaspora. We focus on things that have nothing to do with value. Mm -hmm. We know everything about the problem and nothing about the solution. We are masters, researchers, teachers, investigators, debaters, understanders of the problem, but not the solution. Mm -hmm. If you ask a person, what's the solution? They stop. Oh, oh man, see, that's the problem right there. <laughs> problem-based thinkers. I'm a solution-based thinker. You understand me? I can only think in solutions. You give me a problem, you might not like me because I'm going to come up with a solution. And some people want to revel in their madness. You understand me? They want to bond with their trauma. I don't have time for that. You understand me? As soon as you come through a problem, I got a solution for it. You understand me? Because there's, where there's a will, there's a way. I believe that that is my mantra for life. Forever, anytime I want to solve a problem, anytime something gets hard, where there's a will, there's a way. It's like magic. You understand me? And it's done. So my question more so is, where is the will of our people? Because then you will see the way for our people. Our attention is not aligned with our intentions. And if they are, then our intentions are not righteous. Most of the things that we pay attention to does not pay us back. Mm, all right, Keith. Give some claps. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, you know, I, I like the sight. I want you to soak it in. You understand me? Earn crypto. Earn crypto. Say it with me. Earn crypto. We don't want to be the greatest consumers on the planet Earth. We want to be the greatest producers on the planet Earth. We are supposed to be a producing people, not a consuming people. Everybody else has mastered us to consume what they create. They even mastered us to consume ourselves because we don't own the culture. So when we think we support black, we support them because they own black. So when we talk about creating projects, I want you to think about being a producer, not just where I can go spend money with somebody else. 45 plus million black people in America. All of that for me. Hmm. But we don't invest in each other. Brother got a crypto, that's a black crypto project. What? Wow. He didn't invest in every weirdo project on the planet. You don't know who <laughs> these people are. But we don't love each other enough to value each other enough. Yep, yep. So the moment you create something, it's automatically devalued. Yeah. Because I don't value myself, so you damn sure couldn't create nothing to value. Black clothing. Create projects. Come and go. Create an NFT project with a long-term roadmap. These people that were the Yacht Club had generated $500 million. All they did was take a simple program, run it, throw it on the blockchain with 10,000 pictures. Generate $500 million. I always say this is the easiest time to generate $500 million. Because it's serious, right? All we have to do is divert where we put our money. We already have the spending power. The problem is we haven't converted it to an investing power. The moment we take the money that we spend and we invest with, it gives us returns. So when we start putting it into producing things, then everybody else starts to consume what we produce, and we have a say-so in how the future is being built. 
right? I'm creating my NFT project, but I'm going to create it with utility. There's easy ways that people can manipulate, scheme, utilize the science that we just talked about of tokenomics to try to control behavior. You understand me? Do not get caught up. If it feels like it's too good to be true, that's because it is. Yeah. Sometimes when it comes to crypto, sometimes. Yeah. You get the right crypto, you, you up $10. It's like, that's what it says, too good to be true. <laughs> so don't, no, no, don't put that on me. It's that uh, sometimes it's true. But the point is, everybody in here today don't know that you can create what they call an ERC20 token, right? You can create your own token on the blockchain just like that. You understand me? You wake up the next day and everybody, yo, matter of fact, your token can represent your business project. You understand me? If I create a token for my brother Riz Islam, right? So we got the we got the fax token. You understand me? And we got the fax token, and everybody who's buying into that is what they call a, a, you have a DAO. A DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. This organization operates on its own. Nobody controls it but the people who actually invest into it. But the way I can set up the percentages, we can say, listen, 30% of this goes to Riza Islam to support everything that he's doing. Right? Now, if you got a community that backs you, they're going to buy into it. Well, what would happen to them 70%? Some of you, let's say 5% goes into marketing. Another 5% goes into R&D, right? Another one goes into, 10% goes into charity, right? And then the rest goes back to the people, right? Now, there's many different ways you can do this. I bought my intellectual property on the blockchain eight months ago. I bought 19keys.e. Right, everybody wants to go buy the intellectual property on the blockchain, which is essentially these blockchain systems like the dot com. Right? So if you own your name, you don't have to later come to somebody else who's doing what they call domain partner, buying domains and then trying to sell it to you at a higher price later. Right? Now I bought mine and it was connected to this decentralized autonomous organization known as ENS, Ethereum Name Service. Right? I bought it eight months later, they sent me fifteen thousand dollars. The reason they sent the money is because all the money that they generated for the project, they took a certain percentage and sent it back to the people. So it was $500 million that was sent to the people. Right? This is not a project that's owned by the people. They set the protocols on the smart contract and let it operate on its own. So it's what they call a governance token, meaning that you have a vote within that particular company. You understand me? And what the protocols are and what it does. Right? So now this also creates a completely different system when it comes to a corporate, corporate greed, corporate trust, and institutions, right? Because they can truly be about the profit of the people. You can create a project to where a percentage is going to that product or that service or that organization, and then the rest is going essentially to the shareholders or the people who interact with that product or that project. So DAOs is something that everybody should look into because it's also a way, if I'm thinking of ways to fund a revolution, I'm going to utilize cryptocurrency. Because what you say you believe in, you can now invest in. You understand me? You can put your money where your mind is. If you're really revolutionary, invest in it. If you really support that person, invest in it. So every person in here can have a token that represents your family last name. You understand me? Let's say you got your trust set up. You got your estate set up. They say your family last name. You got your crest set up. You understand me? Let's say that your crest is your NFT or it's your token, right? Now, I believe that every family should represent a product, a service, or industry. You understand me? In the old times, your last name meant something. It carried weight because, oh, those are, those are the uh, uh, Ali brothers. I'm trying to think of the uh, righteous name. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> those are the Ali brothers. They do, you know, uh, 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 sport banking, right? Those are the brothers that do banking. But when we think about family last names today, we can only think about white family names. You understand me? The, the Waltons, right? Uh, uh, the Morgans, J.P. Uh, uh, J. Morgan Chase Bank. You understand me? Think about the Colgates. You understand me? The Hennessy family. All these family last names have been generating income for 100, over 100 years. You understand me? And we've been participating and investing in everybody else's family but ours. Mm. And you go to Walmart, I look at those products, and I think about whose family is this feeding. Yeah. Now, if each one of those products I looked at, and I can see a last name of somebody that's original, I'll be happy to buy that product. Because I know that it's going into the stimulation of the economy of our people. Yeah. So 
So you set up a trust, you set up your estate. Now there's something that you can do, it's called a multi-signature wallet. What this multi-signature wallet allows you to do is everybody in the family, right, can trust each other with this investing protocol. So let's say I'm the one in the family that knows cryptocurrency the best. I can show the family, I do a presentation, look, I done got gangs. You understand me? I'm winning, I'm up 50%. I just bought a new car, new house, the whole nine. Now the family still got to trust you. Now we know that hard. <laughs> right? But in this situation, you don't even need to trust them. Imagine that. You don't even need to trust them. You know how many business situations have been destroyed because of trust? Yeah. Somebody breaking that trust? Yeah. You understand me? It hurts you to your core when somebody breaks your trust. You understand me? Robs you. Does something deceitful, greedy, and evil. It puts trauma in you. It triggers you. I don't ever want to work no more. But today, you have what they call a trustless system. So let's say I take the people in my family and I tell everybody, you download this software, you get you a multi-signature wallet, we're going to basically create what they, it's a vault that you create. Now, and there's two different ways you can do this, so let me give you this game too. So, in this book, basically you can tell them which cryptocurrencies that y'all go invest in. Let's say family, we go take $1,000 every month and we go put it into Solana or Ethereum, right? And if I find any other tokens that I research that I think will give us good games, then I decide for the family we can vote on. Now the way you would vote is everybody who has one of those wallets has to sign it on their own phone or computer in order for the transaction to go through. So they cannot sell anything or buy anything without the discretion of the family and everybody voting on it. So there's no way that they can rob you. There's no way that they can do anything, right, without your verification. So you no longer have to trust them because you see everything, everything is transparent, right? So you start to create the family portfolio, right? What does the family need in their portfolio? I always drop these lists for our people. We need real estate. We own those out here, so we give all these last jewels. We need real estate, we need land, we need crypto, we need gold, right? We need a trust set up, we need an essential product. We need a multitude of different things. But in the portfolio, to make sure by 2053 that your family actually have assets, you understand me? And you have a net worth that is consistently increasing, which is going to be based on your debt to income ratio, how much money you got coming in versus how much money you owe, plus the assets that you own is what your net worth is. So you can calculate that for the family to see what is the net worth of our family, how do I increase the net worth of our family, right? So if I am the trader within the family, then I'm going to have everybody trading on my system, right? Because that means that I can make sure that the family is big gains, and I break it down to three categories. We will have our long-term gains, which is our savings. We'll get into some Bitcoin, get into some Ethereum. Look historically whether it has volatility or not, right? That's like your gold standard, essentially. Then I want some things that may just give us short-term gains. Instead of waiting over years to get 20, 30, 40 percent, you understand me? Maybe I want to get 100 percent within a month, or 50 percent within a month. So I'm going to find projects that allow us to be able to get that. I'm going to bring that to the family, and if everybody sign off on it, then our money is automatically invested into that project, right? Nobody can take their money out unless everybody agrees, mm. right? So you go in there with an agreement already. This is also ways that the family can basically create digital social pools, you understand me, and pull their resources together, right? And then the third one, I'm going to make sure I'm getting some things that will give me parabolic games, right? These may be a little more risky. But they can give you 300%, 1,000% return if you get into some of what they call these altcoins, right? So now the family has a system to where, let's say, they doing investing every single month. They're taking a percentage of their income, 20% of every dollar that you get, right? The family is putting it inside this pool. Now, the beauty about it is you can do it two ways. Like the way I just told you, and they can do what they call ETFs, which is basically creating the edge fund for the family, which can be set up today. You understand me? And it's one of the things I'm about to teach uh, in my class. Because if I can buy all those cryptos for you, I become the hedge fund manager in the family. And what's been recently said is that most millennials are dropping their portfolio management because they realize they can, learn, they can manage their own money. Right? So you go buy or create you a ETF, right? 
And this ETF allows you to be the hedge fund. You're going to buy your cryptos for long-term gains, crypto for short-term gains, crypto for parabolic gains. Or y'all might be a family that's not that uh, a risk adverse, so you just want to buy cryptos that are safe. I want to have block. I want to have some Bitcoin. I want to have some Ethereum. I want to uh, invest in all the blockchains or gaming and things of that nature. So now, anytime that somebody in the family wants to pull their money out, it would just pay them in the coins that you have invested into it, right? But the way you would do it is you would set a standard that nobody can take a dollar out for at least a year. You understand me? Let it compound and grow. And that's important, especially also with the taxes. You understand me? But now your family has a banking system. Your family can calculate in that work. Your family can see its gains. If the bank sent you a report based on how much money that you get in return by keeping your money in the bank, versus how much money you would have got paid if you put it into crypto, you would have fired your bank a long time ago. You understand me? If they said, well, if you put in Bitcoin, yes, you would have got 150 percent You would have put in some money, yes, you would have got 23%. But look, man, we offer 1% return. <laughs> you understand me? We safe and trusted. This is why the institution is failing and dying, because better technology allows people to manage their own money. You understand me? And when you can govern your mind and your mix, that's what the government does for you. You understand me? So you have the ability to now become sovereign and govern yourself. So now your family can create their own structure, institutions, and laws. Now the family has an asset pool. They have a class. They have growth on a monthly and yearly basis. But right now, we are not doing family right because we are not organized within the family. Ooh, you understand me? And the family does not have an organization. It will be ran by organizations. Come on now. So one thing that I'm creating is what I call the block world order. The block world order is basically facilitating all of the things essentially needed to know on the blockchain. Whether it's crypto, whether it's DeFi, whether it's staking, whether it's NFTs, you understand me? whether it's investing, whether it's creating hedge funds for the family, whether it's creating projects, it's going to be within the block world order. I'm going to be putting together a blockchain summit. I looked at all of the big summits that's coming and nobody that looks like me is running. You understand me? So we have to make sure that we are at the forefront of these things and not just consumers of them. Mm. So if anybody wants to get into the Infinite Wealth Strategies, text that number. And for today, everybody get 44% off so they can start learning right now. Yeah, get paid. Uh, last but not least, listen, family. Um, the peril of these times cannot be overstated. You understand me? And if we don't take action today, we don't take that letter to Garcia. You understand me? Then most of the time you're going to be lost. you got about a four or five year window before you will get outpriced, meaning that you won't be able to buy into these assets whatsoever. You understand me? A sense of urgency has to be calculated in the steps that you take the moment that you leave here. You understand me? Try not to get distracted whatsoever. The mind of God is focused. The devil's job is to keep you distracted. So you can't do God. You understand me? God say be and it is. So once you have the knowledge, the difference between where you want to go and where you are is your ignorance. The moment you get the knowledge, the only thing stopping you is procrastination. So once you execute, you have the mindset to take yourself off the slave ship, you understand me, move into ownership, start to have control where you have trust, the idea of stakes, that's rulership, you understand me, then your mind can be above it all and you're on the mothership. I'm 19 keys now.